Hey guys, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this really cool looking fiery text effect in Blender. And now this is really simple. There's not much actually going on here. We have all we have is our fire material, which is procedural and our text, which is reflecting it. And another little thing I added was a particle emitter for some embers. So let's get started. Right, so I've opened up a new blend file and I'm going to go ahead and delete the default cube and add in a plane. Now, I'm going to rotate this on 90 degrees and scale it up. Next, we've got to align the camera, so I'm going to press Control, Alt, and 0. The way I snapped into that front view without pressing numbers is by holding Alt and the middle mouse button. Then you can just slide your mouse around and you snap to different views. It's super handy. Now all we got to do is scale up this plane so it fits the camera and fills the view. And then we're going to get the camera spacing right. So just move it, move it forward a bit because we'll have a plane uh, sitting behind it. Now we're ready to add some text. So shift A, add in some text. And I'm going to move it out a little and rotate it 90 degrees. Next we're going to go into the text settings and just change the font. I'll link a website down below where you can get some awesome free fonts. The one I'm using is Sentry Gothic. Now I'm just going to press tab and change the text. You can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to just capitalize mine, scale it up and put it towards the center. In the geometry settings, I'm going to add an extrusion and a bevel. Now you can see here the text is actually clipping into each other. And we can fix this really easily. So go into the character spacing settings and just bump the number up. Now if you're getting any obvious shading issues, it might help just applying it to a mesh and turning on auto smooth. Just note you won't be able to change the text afterwards, so it's not preferable. Okay, so let's get started on the flame texture. I'm going to duplicate this, this plane here and just move it backwards behind the camera. Now go to the shading tab and give it a new material. This will be our fire. Real quick before we continue, I'm going to change the well color to something like black so we can get some nice contrast happening. Here's the node tree, so if you're comfortably comfortable just building it by yourself, you can skip to the next section, otherwise I'm going to show you how to do it. Add in a mix shader node, connect that up, plug a color ramp into the factor, mix it with transparent node and a emission node. Quick note here, node wrangler kind of messed me up and used the alpha channel of the color ramp, use the color, don't use the alpha. Next, duplicate your color ramp and set it to be the input of your emission color. Add in a math node and patch it into the first color ramp. Now set the mode to multiply. Press Ctrl T to add in some texture mapping and replace the image texture with a separate XYZ node. Now take the X value and put it through to your math node. If you notice that orientation is wrong later on, you can change it to the Y value. Add in a noise node and connect the factor to the second value of your math node. Let's duplicate our texture coordinate nodes and plug them into the noise node. If you did everything correct, it should look a little like this. Um, I'm going to flip mine because that's not the way I want it. And now we have to add some color and clamp some values. So in this color ramp here, I'm going to set the leftmost colors as something bright, like bright yellow. And then the right one is going to be something dark, like a dark orange. This will give the tip of our flame a bright color and the root of it a deep, deep color. And if it's not showing, just move around the sliders until you get something you like. Maybe add some in between. You can do whatever you want. Now we're almost done. The next step is to animate it. So we've got a fiery look. And the first part of the animation is going to be sort of the birth of the flame. So we're going to use this slider here to make the flame initially grow from nothing. So I'm going to clamp it over to the right. And so we can see our keyframes. I'm going to add in a new little window and just set it to be a timeline. Great. Just so make sure you're on frame one and come over to our color ramp and press I on the position value. Let's move further forward in our, in our timeline and move the slider to the left and press I again. As you can see, we've just created our animation. Now if we select this color ramp node again, we can control the speed by moving around these keyframes. 
So I'm going to push this to the left, make it a little bit faster. Okay, that looks good. And let's move over onto the next animation. This will be the movement of the flame itself. Let's go over to the second mapping node here. And now sure you're on frame one and we're going to press I and create a keyframe for our Y value. Then move further into our animation. I'm just going to leave mine there and let's try a value like five and press I again to create another keyframe. Obviously, I have no idea if this value is going to work, so let's see. It's way too fast, so let's change it. All we need to do is go onto our keyframe and move the value down to something like two and press I again. Now let's have a look. I think that's still a bit too fast. So I'm going to move the keyframe all the way to the right and this will give it a bit more time to move. Next thing I'm going to do is press A to select all the keyframes and change the interpolation method to linear. So let's see how this looks. Yeah, I think that's a good speed. Uh, if you want, just play around with some of the values and do whatever you like. If you want the fire to be less intense, you can change the sliders or up the emission strength. It's all up to you. Let's move on to the next part, the texturing. For this, we can either do things procedurally or use image textures. For the wall, I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple stone procedural material. And then for the text, I'm just gonna use a wave texture. So here's the final if you wanna copy. Otherwise, let's delete everything and start to build it. First, add in a color ramp and connect it up like so. Now we're gonna change the color of this to be the color of our stone. So set the white value to something like a light sort of brown and set the black value to something like a dark brown. We're going to push these two sliders together and then add in a noise texture. Connect this up to the color ramp. Now press Ctrl T and add some mapping nodes. Set the texture coordinate to UV. Up the detail of your noise texture. Now add in three more color ramps and connect two of those up. Now we're going to add in two math nodes. Connect the first one like so and set it to multiply. Now we're gonna make a copy of this noise texture and bring it down, connect the factor output to the factor input of the color ramp, and then connect up the mapping node. Now let's increase the scale to something like 110, and we can also increase the roughness. Now connect the output of the first node to the input of the second math node. Make sure it's set to multiply. We're gonna copy this math node and set it to subtract, then put the value of our first node and our color ramp into that. Now we're gonna add in one more math node and set it to add. It'll just be adding those last two math nodes together. Now add in a bump node and just plug the output into the height and the normal into the normal of your principal BSDF. And you should get something like this. The next step is to just tweak the color ramps until we get a desired result. This third color ramp down, if we just bring the white slider closer to the left, we can start to get some really cool looking ridges. And I'll just pop up a picture now of my color ramp settings, so you have a bit of a guide of where to aim at for a similar effect. So that's, that's the stone texture done. And as you can see, my text has actually already got a material on it. And that's because it's the easiest one to do. It's literally just a wave texture. I'll pop up the node group here. You can just copy it by yourself. Now let's move on to the finishing touch, adding some embers via a particle system. This is also really easy. So let's add in a plane and scale it up a bit and move it down and out a bit from the wall. Now let's go into the plane's particle settings and add a new particle system. I'm gonna change the number of particles to 500, but we might change this later. And I'm gonna bump the lifetime up to 250 frames. Now let's go all the way down to field weights and turn gravity off. Next up, I'm gonna add in an icosphere and set the number of subdivisions to one so we have a nice low poly model for our ember. If we move this out a little bit and scale it all the way down, we can apply the scale. And now let's use that in the render settings as our instanced object. So if we select that and click on our icosphere, you'll now notice that we'll have icospheres instead of halos, which is really cool. Next, let's give our icosphere an orange emission material. And I'm gonna really quickly tweak the particle scale. So now if we press play on the animation, we can notice our particles are moving upwards. And this is really cool, but they're just a bit too uniform. Notice how none of them are really drifting around. So what we need to add is a force field. 
and more specifically a turbulence force field. So let's go in and add in a turbulence force field. So now if we go into the settings, we can bump up the strength a little bit to a value that we feel comfortable with. Let's just have a look at what 2 looks like. I think that's actually a little bit too much, so I'm going to drop that down to like 1.4. I'm also going to reduce the number of particles to something like 100, and I think this is looking good. Next thing we can do is add in some random scale, which will give a little bit more variation between our particles. And that's pretty much it. I'd recommend adding in some motion blur and some bloom in the compositing tab. Now finally, if you want, you can add some lights to the scene. I'm using a spot lamp that's kind of pointed down and tilted like 45 degree towards my text and a few area lamps here and there to get some, uh, get some side lighting happening. So that's cool. You can just play around with that. If you want to render it out, uh, set, set the render mode to uh, animation and make sure you're either rendering it as like a PNG sequence or EXR or something or an FFmpeg with the container set to like MPEG4 and the, and the output quality set to perceptually lossless, which should be fine. Anyway, once you're done guys, you should get a really cool looking effect like this, which can be made even better with some sound design and maybe a bit of color grading. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll be making all the project files free to download on my Gubroad. And if you make anything following along, please be sure to tag me on either Instagram or Twitter so I can check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.